Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. It is upon it that which you all are going to cast sometime during this semester. It's a solid piece over here. It is inside of the mole cavity. And this is the sprue button, and here are the sprue, and it has been sprued by using Y sprue. And the hope is this, that this entire ponyx to freeze before these sprue button, sprue button and sprue freezes, or in other words, it will feed and compensate for the shrinkage which is taking place during the change of state. Now, this has not been done properly in this case, and at the end result is that you see such a poor surface. One gets a very, very poor surface. It is all gone in here just because that the feeding did not take place properly. Well, naturally, one may say that the reason this happened because this distance in the sprue, in other words, that I use too long of a sprue. If I use a somewhat shorter sprue, I will accomplish that. Or I may have to use some uh, vent. A vent or another sprues that you can attach in here, another piece of wax that you can attach it in here and take it to the outside and let it carry some of these hot gases out and cause or help to freeze this ponyx a little bit sooner. For example, here is one with a vent. You see that? The molten metal goes through these sprues right into here, and then the excess gases, they will come out of here to the other side. And this has not been done the job because when you look at it, the surface is not as good, is not good, is maybe a little bit better than the previous one, but you can see some poor surfaces in here and also in here that which have not been filled properly. Now, one may say that if I would have used these length of the sprue a little bit shorter, I would have had a better chance of feeding this ponyx. Now, in the next case, that is just exactly what has been done. May we have the close-up of this? Now, you see that, again, it has vent, and it has a wise, wise sprue, and the sprues are much shorter. But once again, you may notice that right around here, there's a very poor surface but overall is much better than the previous ones. And one may say that I don't care how poor is my sprue, all I care is the ponyx itself. If one looks at it if in that, uh, from that point of view, maybe this is acceptable, but there is no reason for any part of the casting to come out as poorly as this one has. The main reason for this is that the much smaller size of the sprue is used. This part is freezing, before the ponyx has a chance of, uh, to freeze, and therefore ponyx is actually feeding the sprue rather than the sprue button through this sprue to feed the ponyx. In the next case, we have taken one single sprue, but much larger size, without any vent, and then one may see right over here that we, again, we have a poor surface. Now, finally, we have gotten uh, acceptable castings by using the vent and by using the large sprue. Now, I may add one other point, too, that even though that the, th these are all done by thermally expanding investment, in other words, the one that is usually called high heat investment, but neither Cristobalite nor luster gas needs to be heated to 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. 
they all can be cast at 900 degree Fahrenheit without any damage. As a matter of fact, the surface will come out much, much better if you cast these things at 900 instead of uh, at 1200. You can compare the surface of these two just from the surface of the areas that have been cast and then you can see that how rougher this one is compared to these. This is the 900 and Cristobalite investment. This is 1200 Cristobalite investment. Here is another Cristobalite 1200 investment. Here is another one. And here is finally, here is the fifth one you can see very easily that none of them have the kind of a surface that this one offers. So be sure that even though that they, we may call them high heat technique, that does not mean that the temperature of the ring should be higher than 900. The old investments, you had to do it that way. But the, with the new investments, such as luster cast, such as cristobalite, you, the investment reaches to its maximum thermal expansion values when it reaches the 900 anyway. So whether you heat it any higher than that or not, you are not going to get much changes in its thermal expansion. Some other type of investment, like gray of Ransman Randolph, and there are others also in the market that they need to be raised to 1200 degree Fahrenheit in order to obtain full thermal expansion of the investment, but not with luster cast and cristobalite. And I w want to emphasize on those points so that you would never heat these investments to any degree, any temperature higher than 900 degree if you want to get a good casting. Now here are some other castings. They are made in in MOD type of pattern. Here is, again, heated at 1200 degree Fahrenheit. It is kind of a hard to see, but you might be able to notice that there is a slight opening on this casting. It's not bad, but there is a slight rocking. In other words, it has expanded a little bit too much. Now, here is another one that by using a somewhat larger sprue, now the amount of expansion is even more. This rocks quite a bit, and these are all done with the luster cast heated at 1200 degree Fahrenheit. One may say that, well, we, are, we know better than that. We should never sprue MOD with single sprues. The Y sprue is the ideal type of a sprue. But when you use Y sprue also with this type of an investment, again, the investment expands too much and causes the rocking of this casting. Here is, again, the same type of an investment, Cristobalite, but this time it's heated only to 900. And again, it is just as shaky as the others. And here's another one. Now, these two, on the other hand, are made with using water added and adding 1.1 cc water. As far as the result of these two are concerned, they are much better. They do not rock. They have not expanded any excessively. They have expanded the right amount, and the fit is good. Either this one, which is a Y sprue, or this one, which is a single sprue. See, it doesn't rock. I'm trying it, but it doesn't rock. It doesn't rock. The, the whole thing moves, rather than casting or the tooth. So in, a, in other words, that these are the reasons that we are trying to show you both techniques. Whenever you are doing inlays, you will get much better castings if you use water-added hygroscopic technique. On the other hand, when you are making a full crowns, you might be better off when you use high heat technique because the full crowns, when they are slightly larger, they may be even better. They may go over the die somewhat easier than if they would have been a little bit smaller. Here are some full crown castings. For example, once again, these are the high, uh, high heat technique, or in other words, that really 1,200 degree has been used in these. And you can see that the surfaces are not very good. Now, here is, on the other hand, this is a 900 burnout. And here are 
the 1200 per knot. Now you see that this is a much better surface. This is with water added technique. Once again, the surface is similar to this one. Now, one may say that I want to use a Y sprue with this. And if you use a Y sprue, please don't sprue it in this fashion. This is way overdone. The separation of these two parts are much too much, and therefore the feeding is not quite proper. And furthermore, this is again used at 1,200 degree, and you can compare the difference between this one and that one. If you are going to use a white sprue, you could make it fairly decent. And here is another casting that which fits good. But once again, the oven temperature has been 1,100 degrees. The surface is not very good. You may like to know that what does happen if, in case, you, do not, you did not use the right length of the time in the oven. In other words, that instead of keeping these things in the oven for about one hour or so, suppose what would happen if you would go ahead and cast it at, uh, after 20 minutes or 30 minutes or anything like that. This is what ha does happen when you cast too soon. Maybe you have the close-up. It is just full of porosity inside and outside. You notice that. These are all due to the fact that the air could not get in. In other words, when the molten metal came in, still some residue of the wax was in the mold cavity, did not allow all that air to get out of the mold cavity, and therefore it was trapped with this gold, and this is why that the surface of this gold is so poor. This type of a porosity may also occur when the metal is heated too high of a temperature, but not to this extent. The, in both cases, what one is doing it is creating too much gases and is not enough chance for those gases to get out of the mold cavity before the metal freezes. And therefore, it, all of them, they get trapped in the metal. So in conclusion, I like to add it up that just to obtain a good castings, one has to obtain a good wax pattern. But that's not enough. He has to sprue it using the right sprue size, right location of the spruing, and even right direction. And he should take, care, uh, take a special care in melting the alloy, not to over, overheat the alloy, and not to cast it when the metal is not completely molten. Listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.